Now, just this morning, Jagex announced that the polling system in the old school RuneScape is going to be changed. Ever since the inception of old school RuneScape, the polling system has been in place and for the most part hasn't really changed too much. So why are they changing it now, what are they changing, and what are my thoughts about it and how it'll affect the future of the game? Now to start us off here, what exactly are they changing? The first, the most impactful change that they're probably going to be making is actually reducing the percent of votes that are required for a piece of content to pass the poll. Now ever since 2013 when this game was released, every poll required a 75% yes vote for the content to come into the game but they would like to reduce it to 70%. So not a significant decrease, but enough that some of those closely contested polls, such as some of the items in the most recent poll 77, would actually pass. For example, the special attack orb in the wilderness, that would have been changed under this new polling structure, and of course, many other updates. So what is the reason Jagex gave for making that change? Well, apparently only 6% of the active members actually vote in polls, which means it only takes roughly 1.5% of the player base to stop a piece of content coming into the game. Now, will 70% make a significant difference either way? It could. I've seen a lot more good suggestions fail at around the 70 to 75% mark than I have seen bad suggestions pass at that amount. Obviously, that's kind of subjective, but I can't remember anything too controversial that was even close to passing, even at 70%. If you recall the partnerships poll from three years ago, probably one of the most divisive polls in the entire game's history, only at a yes percent of 30%, the poll to add sailing to old school RuneScape failed with 67% yes votes. So I don't think this vote percent change will drastically change the type of content coming into old school RuneScape. It would just allow for a little bit more wiggle room. So that polling change is pretty simple. We're just going to change a couple percentages, but something that will actually be more impactful than that, in my opinion, is the changes they have planned to the polling process. Now I definitely had a bit of a misconception on how the polling process worked, I think a lot of other people did as well. In my mind, when Jagex wants to conceptualize a new update, they would start by putting out a pitch for the update, and then they would poll it, and then they would start working on it. But that's actually not the way it works currently. Their current approach for their content pipeline is they develop and design a document to put forward to the community, they start some production on the actual update, they put forward a blog to the public that details what they're working on and get some community feedback. Then they do a bit more production on it, and then finally they pull it nearer to the end. So you can see the issue here is that if it fails, that's just a ton of wasted development time and not nearly enough time for community feedback to make any significant changes because it's already been significantly developed. Uh, so what they're looking to do is improve on this process. The new approach is going to involve polling things a lot earlier into the design process, which allows Jagex for one the certainty that their development time is not being wasted, and allows for a lot more community feedback early on, and allows them to work a lot more directly with the community. So the first step of the new process would have a pitch or idea in the form of a dev blog come out first, then there'd be a green light poll. This would be an in-game poll that would just as simply poll whether you want this content based on the initial pitch. If it passes, they'll move on to a production phase. This is where the bulk of the work would take place on the project, developing the underlying systems, features, and anything else required to make the content actually functional. The fourth step would involve getting community feedback and refining the content further. This would involve further polling regarding areas that they're going to be changing, rewards, specific mechanics, features, and XP rates, stuff like that. So once all of the final mechanics, the experience rates, and the rewards have been finalized, there will be the seal of approval poll, which is be the final poll covering everything. If that passes, they'll move on to a final production phase where they polish up all the content, make any important changes, and then the content is released. Now for an example of this new process in action, we can actually look at the Tombs of Masket. They actually initially pulled the entire raid back in January of 2022, but they didn't have any rewards attached. They simply shared their vision for what the content at a high level is meant to be, and they simply had a poll question, should the Tombs of Amasca be added to the game? Once that passed, they move on to the primary development phase, and then later on there were polls regarding the new rewards and further details about the raid. 
Now something that's very important about this new process is if we look at the raid weapons, there were quite a few iterations of what the Tombs of Masket would reward. For example, Masri used to have a low life effect, that got scrapped and changed. The Tomb of Kinshada used to have a varying attack speed with more powerful or less powerful hits based on what cycle you were in. But thanks to this new process, the community was able to get involved and the rewards were changed. Now another area of the polling system that they cover in this blog is their new polling charter. The polling charter is meant to be kind of an official rulebook that details what will be polled and what won't be. So with the new polling charter, what will be polled? Well, high level designs and concepts for new content. So pretty much any new main game content will be polled, new mechanics, new rewards, quests, stuff like that as well as changes to existing content which will have a significant impact on the players, such as new content areas, area expansions, reworks of existing content, and things that will significantly change the existing meta. Now what they are not going to be pulling are temporary game modes such as leagues or deadman mode, temporary events and seasonal events such as the Christmas, Halloween, or Easter event, visual, UI, or graphical enhancements, so the actual art style, that's not really going to be pulled. Uh, of course, bug fixes, those aren't going to be pulled either. Small quality of life enhancements, now that could be a little misinterpreted. What would qualify as that? Well, apparently the toggleable wiki orb is an example. Additional settings menus. Moving a tree or plant that obstructs pathing for no reason. Or make all options in relevant menus. This section seems a little bit up to interpretation what constitutes a small quality of life change or a more impactful one, but on top of that they're not going to be polling any future changes to the polling system so they can make changes to that whenever they like. Which although I think a lot of people will find this a little bit unsettling, the reality is they could always have done this, but now it's in the charter. They're not going to be polling integrity or balance changes, so stuff like the blowpipe, nerf, equipment rebalance, stuff like that, that's not getting polled or future versions of that anyway. Content that involves the new player experience is not getting pulled, such as tutorials or the adventure paths. Bond pricing and membership pricing, that's not getting pulled, although it would be so funny if they did. And then there's a section for smaller changes and accessibility and diversity changes. So there's actually a significant list of things that they're not pulling, but, but this is essentially what they've been doing for the last three or four years anyway, now it's just kind of codified into some kind of charter. So that is it for all of the changes to the polling system, but one area that they didn't really cover today, but they are going to look at in the future, is restricted voting. Restricted voting is something that they've been experimenting with in the last year or so. Essentially, what it means is they would restrict the vote to certain communities. So, so if it's a question regarding PvP, only people who participate in PvP would be able to vote. If it's PvM, same thing. If it's an Ironman question, only Ironman can vote. Stuff like that. Restricted voting has been somewhat controversial ever since its initial use. They are going to be having a look at it in the future, but they want to let this blog settle a bit first before they open that whole can of worms as well. But they are looking for feedback on restricted voting. So that is a summary of the new polling changes, essentially reducing the vote percentage to 70% and coming up with a more efficient process for actually designing content and when they poll it. In my opinion, I think this is overall a very sensible update. Reducing the voting percentage to 70% debatable what kind of new content we're going to get with that. I'm not really sure how impactful that's going to be, but I don't really mind the small reduction. But the biggest part of this update to me is actually the new process that they're going to be taking. It's just a more granular approach that will allow us to have a lot more input into how the content is being developed. With this new approach, we might as a community be able to come up with a new skill everyone can agree on, or exciting new content that previously wasn't refined enough or people couldn't get on board with it to actually allow it to come into the game. I'm hopeful that this will allow more interesting content that doesn't just fall into the safe bets that Jagex essentially would have to make, such as, you know, a new Slayer boss, easy quality of life changes, a raid, stuff that they knew they wouldn't waste their development time on. This will allow them to be a bit more experimental while also getting more feedback, which should allow for just more exciting and well-refined content in old school RuneScape, which I'm really excited about. As always though, let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you to Mitch Reinders, March3258, 
the hybrid and kush patel for subscribing to the dragon tier thank you once again for all the support also thank you to yodia sub 89 mexos and ndm001 for subscribing at the runite tier appreciate you all and of course everyone else who became a member subscribed or just watched my video thanks again and i will see you next time